Okay, so we're back, and I'm hoping that you were able to do those, the first part of those problems on your Google Doc ABA for naming um, ionic compounds with transition metal. So now we're going to go in the other direction. Instead of coming up with the name, we're going to take the name and come up with the formula. Okay, so when you're going to write a formula for a type 2 binary compound, the first thing to realize is whether you actually have a type 2 binary compound, so you need to identify it. And this is not so bad because if the name you're given contains a Roman numeral, then you have a type 2 compound. Okay, so look for the Roman numeral. All right, and then often it will also end in IDE because those nonmetals will end in IDE. Again, it may have a polyatomic ion. All right, so let's just practice writing a formula for this one shown here on the bottom, iron 3 chloride. All right, and then we're going to, I'll do a few more on my camera, and then we'll be done. Okay, so if you have to come up with the formula for iron 3 chloride, uh, the first thing you do is you figure out the symbols and the charges for each of your elements. So iron Roman numeral 3, by definition, means that that iron has a plus 3 charge. So that Roman numeral 3 is telling you the charge on the iron, okay? And then chloride is just Cl with a minus one charge. Okay, so this is what we're starting from. Um, iron three plus and chloride minus one. Okay, and then the next step is you gotta put your thinking caps on a little bit and think about how many of each ion are you gonna need so that the whole thing is neutral. So in this case, I need to have a total of three chlorides, uh, which will give me a negative three on the anion side because I have a plus three on the metal side. Okay, so now that'll add up to zero and I'll have a neutral ionic compound. And then you take all that and you just write your formula. So your formula will have one iron and three chlorides. And there you go, FeCl3. Okay, so personally, I think it's a little bit easier to go in this direction and come up with the formula when you have to come up with the name, the tricky part is to just remember to put in your Roman numeral. Okay, and again, having a transition metal should send off some big bells in your head, hopefully. Okay, all right, so let's do a few practice problems. And again, I'm going to switch over to my camera so that I can write these out. Okay, so we're going to write formulas for ionic compounds that contain transition metals. So I wrote out the directions. We're going to write down the symbols and the charges. We're going to figure out how many of each element we need to make it neutral, and then we'll write the formula. So this sentence right here, you should probably photocopy, you know, 5,000 times and tape it on the wall next to your pillow, you know, right next to your periodic table, because that's the key to this whole thing. Okay, the ionic compounds are neutral and the charges have to add up to zero. Okay, so let's just practice this first one, iron to nitrate. All right, iron is right here, Fe, all right? And there's no charge listed here because it's a transition metal. But in this case, we have a Roman numeral 2. So now I do know that the charge on that is a 2 plus. All right, so nitrate doesn't end in IDE. So that's a big clue that it's a polyatomic ion. And you should look on the back of your periodic table, whoops a daisy, uh, to find nitrate. All right, so let's look here. Uh, we'll scan down here, scanning, scanning, scanning. Okay, here's nitrate. And its formula is NO3 with a minus one charge. So NO3 minus one. All right, and then you look at it and you say to yourself, how many of each do I need? So the whole thing adds up to zero. And hopefully you realize that you need one more nitrate because now this side is a minus two and this side is a plus two. Okay, and so now you can write your formula. You have one iron and two nitrates. So write iron. And then remember, if you have two more than one copy of a polyatomic ion, you gotta put that in parentheses. So NO3, and you put the little two on the outside. And that is the formula, okay? All right, awesome. Let's do this one, copper one chloride. All right, copper, Roman numeral one. Here's copper, the symbol for copper is Cu. Chloride, again, is right there. 
the minus one charge. So copper, Roman numeral one, means it has a plus one charge. Chloride is Cl with a minus one charge. So that was not too bad. I got one of those and one of those. I can just write my formula just like that. CuCl. Okay. All right, let's do the next two. Lead four hydroxide. Lead Roman numeral four. I think we did one with lead already, but here's lead right there. And this Roman numeral four means by definition that it has a plus four charge. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, so we gotta find it on the back. Scanning down here, scanning, 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 beep, 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 here it is, hydroxide. And its formula is OH with a minus one charge. All right, so that's this, okay? So those are the elements with their charges, and now we gotta look at it and think, okay, how many of those OHs do I need because I got to add up to four. So I need to add three more of these here. Okay, so now this anion side equals a negative four. The cation side equals a positive four. And I can write my formula. PB, and I have four OHs, so I got to put parentheses around that polyatomic ion. And there's my formula. All right, let's do the last one. Tin, Roman numeral two, oxide. All right, tin is right here. It's Sn. All right, the Roman numeral 2 is telling us that it has a plus 2 charge. Oxide is oxygen, and it has a minus 2 charge. So one of each will cancel out, and my formula will be SnO. Okay, so that's that. So uh, I am done, and you can go back to that Google Doc and finish the last problems about writing formulas from names. Okay, and please let your teacher know if you need some help.